told her that story, but I, you know, but uh, what would she that say to that? Like, she would she get it? it? She's so, so cool. down to earth and real. I was down, we were, you know, it's a little indie film, you know, that we made. So I was, we were down in the basement of this house, you know, when we were filming the house scenes and um, sitting in some lazy boy recliners <laughs> that, you know, whoever the person's house that we were filming right. at. Yeah. Um, talking, 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 and I FaceTimed my daughter at one point, and you know, we were talking on a on my FaceTime on my little phone, and I was like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Watching a movie," you know, and, and Julia leans over and she goes, "Notting Hill." Is she <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! I mean, the best movie ever. So great. Okay. Now you started your career. I mean, much of your career has been in theater. Yes. And you started, and then you didn't really, I think, get another big role until Dear Evan Hansen, which is so many years later, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so about, yes. talk about that because if, you know there's so many people in this room, especially the moms who have been working and yeah. maybe stopped working and went back to work, and I just think that's such a great story that you just kept at it. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I kept at it, and then I didn't keep at it. I quit the business a bunch of times, and I left it's New York, hard. and yeah, it's hard, it's a hard business, and it's hard to keep putting yourself, you know, your constant- Girlfriend, not anymore! <laughs> I just had the conversation with my manager this morning. Because it never ends. You're always What's having next? to convince people Ugh. that it's got to be you this time, mm. you know? And it's like all of us. So, what did you do when you like quit? That. You would Oh, I, I moved to the mountains of Western North Carolina and worked in a vet clinic. And I thought I might be a vet. And then I watched one neutering of a German shepherd. And I thought, I'm not going to be a vet. <laughs> <laughs> Those kinds of things. That's awesome. And what else? I was, I was, I sang a lot. So, that I kept doing. I sang in. Um, you know, folk clubs every all across the country, and, and I would keep doing plays wherever I was. I would do theater, I would do theater, and and then I would come back to New York, and I would book a really nice job, and then I would have a couple of really crummy auditions that were completely disheartening. And I thought, wait a minute, I, I don't really want to do this. There's got to be something else, you know, something that's a little gentler, um, because most of us have, you know, we all do. We all have fragile hearts, and it's tough to, you know, keep. Putting yourself out there. And then how did you but get that hat, the big one? It was, I, you know, I really attribute it to uh, becoming a mother because I wasn't living in New York anymore. I was on Maui. It was beautiful. I had a baby. You know, she's fabulous. But over the, we, I ended up breaking up with her father. And out of the, the acting was really the only thing I ever knew how to do that ever made me any money. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to take her back to New York. And um, I took her to New York, and it was really crummy for like four or five years. And then, so you were it really on started, your own, though. I was on my own. I had, and then I had a really lovely boyfriend who now um, is. We've still been together, and it's great. And uh, but it took a while. But because it was her, and I needed to be the responsible one. Suddenly, I had to be. But then it was a great life lesson for me, which is like, oh, I stuck something out. <laughs> it paid off. Thank God. <laughs> so you were um, auditioning yeah, here in New York while raising your daughter, and, yeah. and did you have like a day job or a night job? I t I I had um, I lived off of all of my savings that I'd ever ever had. Um, I did. I would do like small gigs that would take me. I worked for. I did like corporate events and and comedy events and singing at this place, just sort of cobbling together a little living and you know, asking my parents for money when it got really bad and those kinds of things. Luckily they were helping. So when so when you got the role and from then, from Dear Evan with yeah, that and was Bernie like, and Stacy and you you know and I saw it off Broadway before it moved. Yeah. Did you know this is it and we've got something like how deep in did you know, okay I think the way that the show has become such a phenomenon, I don't think we ever could have predicted that it would explode the way that it has and crossed over into mainstream, you know, the mainstream consciousness. Of, you know, I don't think we ever could have predicted that. But the second that we opened the script to read it, and a lot of us were there at that first time the book, The Spine Got Cracked on the script, it was, we knew we had something special. So. Um, we believe
believed in the project on its own merit and 